In here is where we look after and tint all of our interior products. So we've got the mixing machines all here. We've got a database of tens of thousands of colors. That's every BS color, RAL color, whatever you need, we can match it all on here. We've got a spectrometer down on the side here. This means that you could bring in literally anything to us and we can match it from whatever, whether it's a piece of card or a, we've had pieces of shelf, people bring in all sorts for us uh -huh. and we can match that colour exactly. Right. So as long as it's small, small enough to get in your spectrometer. As long the... as you can put it in there then absolutely. Okay. Uh, we also do all the quality control checks in here so around the, around the uh, lab you will find that there's different bits of equipment that will measure all the different things you need to make sure your paint is absolutely perfect every single time. It's got to go through those quality control checks uh, to make sure it's the right thickness and that every time you use it, it's going to feel exactly the same on the brush uh, and you get those perfect results every time. So this is the factory here. We've got all of our raw materials. Everything is made from scratch in the factory here in Bicester. We've got the mixer machines all around. At the top you'll see all the piping, this is the ventilation and to make sure everything is filtered out so there's no harmful uh, you know, toxins and everything in the air, this keeps all the staff safe. We've got IBCs full of all the solvents that we use here, everything is made on the site here, it's all British manufacturing from the raw materials. We keep a lot of stock on hand at all times so that we're always ready for any order that might come in. We offer next day delivery so if you order it by three o'clock we can get your order tinted and to you for the next day. Suppose I want to go home and make some paint, <laughs> what do I need? You'll need the, the powders, you'll need a solvent which could be water as well, you'll need a resin which typically in our paints we will use a pure acrylic, a pure acrylic resin and then you need your additives and the additives can be everything from biocides to stop mold growth or just to simply help it stop going off in the can uh, to make it last a bit longer to help it flow better under the brush. In our product there's 36, 37 different additives that just help tweak the performance to exactly what you need it to be. I'm interested in this biocide thing because I have had paint go off in the can before. Yeah. When you make a, a batch of paint, you put it into the can and it will last for about two years or so um, for it to be okay. After that, you've got the chance that it will start going off again. So, uh, for example, in, in our stocks here, if anything's been in stock for more than two years, we put it back through quality control uh, just to make sure it's still okay. Uh, but the thing that will typically happen is, uh, is when you use the paint, if you're dipping your brush in or anything like that, you might put some sort of contaminant in there and then over time that will grow and cause issues with the paint. So if you leave a tin of paint untouched, it will last for, for several years, no problem. Um, but it's once you start using it and not sealing it properly and going back to it, that's when you'll find the problems. So basically you've got a biocide in there, which is protecting the paint while it's being preserved. Yep. And every time you put some contamination into there, some of that biocide has to go to work on that contamination and then that depletes it, is that right? Exactly right, it's, it's a finite amount of biocide in the paint, so whenever it has to be used, like exactly as you say, it gets used up, uh, and that's the same when it's put onto the walls as well, if you get some bacteria or mold or anything like that, it goes onto the wall. The biocide within the paint film will come through to try and kill it, but after a while it will run out of that biocide. So the algae wins in the end. So in the end. <laughs> basically the, the best thing would be clean it off as well as you can, don't rely on the biocide to do the job for you, Yeah. and then the biocide will take care of anything that we might call sort of Absolutely. residual. Has the environmental lobby or legislation made to reduce the biocides in there? Yeah, there's, all, there's constant legislations that you have to keep up with in paint on the materials that you can and can't use, the biocides that you can and can't use. So, you know, if you go back 10, 15 years, we'd be using one really, really strong biocide. Now we can't use that and we might use three or four different biocides that work together to give the same performance and the same effect. It's, it's something that we constantly have to work and keep updating on. And uh, solvents, obviously solvents, you, you in the Hanford and Green range, you're, you're water-based, totally water-based. Correct, yeah. So the Hanford and Green range is fully water-based and that helps with a couple of things. Uh, number one, it means that it's, it keeps the odour down and obviously it's more environmentally friendly than using solvents. Uh, and the VOCs uh, remain very low, that's volatile organic compounds. Uh, so that's all the nasty stuff that goes into the air when you're painting, that smell that gives you a headache, you don't get as much of that. Uh, and also it helps with the drying times. Water-based paints will typically dry a lot, lot faster 
uh, our acrylic paints will be touch dry and ready to recoat in under an hour. And let's be fair, a lot of the trade they you know, were brought up with the solvent based products. I feel there's a great resistance to water based paints out there. There is and I think it's because when water based paints first started coming onto the scene the technology just wasn't there and it wasn't as good as the oil based equivalents. Things have moved on so fast and, and ourselves and all other paint manufacturers are investing a lot of money in bringing water-based paints up to uh, a standard that in all honesty now they are outperforming oil-based paints and in so many areas that it just makes sense for for professional painters and decorators to make that switch and, and a lot of people are yeah i mean they don't go yellow that's the first thing water-based paints you know so yeah. so for all these people who are worried about paint going yellow and the householders hate it they spend a lot of money having a house painted or the interior painted and then a couple of years down the line, I think that's already started to go yellow. Oil base only will do that. Water based paints, they just will not yellow. Um, it's the different makeup of the paint. That on its own is, is a massive advantage, as you say. But what about hardness? Because people say they're quite soft, the water based paints. You'll find that our paint is it's very tough, it's durable, it's class one um, tested for as a scrub rating, so it's incredibly durable. And, like I say, I think it's uh, it's about educating people that water-based paints have moved on so much now that they they really are becoming the you know not just an alternative to oil-based, but they are a better version and a, a, you know better for professional de uh, decorators. We've made our focus to go in and make a paint that is uh, of a much higher quality. So we go for a premium standard paint and then sell it to the people who are going to benefit most from it. So the resin we use in our in our Hanford and Green acrylic paints is the most expensive resin available in today's market. So and that's because we just don't compromise on raw materials. We want to make a product that is as good as we can make it and that's what we've done and that's how we separate ourselves from you know the leading manufacturers who do have that advantage of of producing on mass. I guess when people look at the cost of a tin of paint, quite a lot of that is in the advertising of the paint, isn't it? Yes and no. I mean, there is obviously the raw material costs and, and the manufacturing of it, everything like that. It depends on what sort of brand you're working with. There will be certain pa paint brands where they might charge a lot more. Um, and yes, you could reasonably say that probably half of that is, is spent on marketing and advertising money. Uh, hours is is not that much um, sort of pounds on you know pennies on the pound we focus more on going straight to uh, you know commercial markets where you don't need to spend lots of money on glossy adverts and stuff in magazines so and and being a bit sharper on our advertising marketing costs like that is is what helps us to have a, a good quality product that's also still competitive on price we're, we're targeting a, a specific audience of people uh, that are going to benefit the most from our product uh, and that is professional painters and decorators um, that are, are you know doing hospitality sectors hotels student apartments commercial projects where things like very fast drying times and low odor uh, and being able to have great coverage from the paint and so that you're using a lot less off of it overall they all pay off on large-scale commercial projects and that's what we target so if people want to buy some Hanford and Green paint, first of all, is there a minimum quantity they've got to buy? Uh, there's no minimum quantity. Two and a half litres is absolutely fine and we can deliver that straight to you. We will always look to work with you and if you need a, a small sample to try it out and do your own testing and everything like that, we're more than happy to accommodate. We do four finishes. We have a matte, which is a, like a dead matte flat finish. We have a low sheen, which sort of sits in the middle. We have a satin, uh, which is a bit more glossy. Uh, and then we do have a, a gloss version as well uh, for people that still want that. When you say people still want that, because I don't use gloss indoors, I think it looks a bit too truckly and, yeah, and it's, old it's, fashioned really. <laughs> it's a strange one. We find sort of certain pockets of the country like gloss and certain don't. Uh, satin seems to be very popular at the moment for, for woodwork and doors and things like that. And then the low sheen and matte is, is what people pretend, tend to prefer on, on walls and ceilings now. Okay, so here we're tinting a custom colour. This one's called Slate 3 that we've matched for a customer. We've got a five litre tub of our acrylic low sheen product. And you can see on the screen here exactly what's being added in. Um, so it's, it's as accurate as 
This one here, we've got yellow oxide going in a 7.5 milliliter. So we go down to 0.5 of a milliliter to make sure that the colors are absolutely right. And all we do is we click on here. When it finishes, it stops very sharply. There's no drips or anything like that. That's all part of the design to make sure that the color is spot on every single time. So the machine gets purged and cleaned every day. Um, there are different tubes for every single color on here. So it's not all coming through one tube. It, it comes out separately. Uh, and what happens is actually a slight bit of suction. So at the end of the dispense, you don't get those drips of additional colors. So it doesn't contaminate the next batch and you don't put you know, an extra milliliter too much in. So we have two machines. This one here has got 22 stainers in it. And then we have another one with 16. And with those, you can make pretty much any color you like. You can't do fluorescence or metallics, but that's about it. You can get pretty much everything else on the spectrum there. Out of 22. Out of 22. These tubs is, is what the stainer comes in, um, which does make it quite difficult to put it into the machine. <laughs> but that's how we buy it. Um, and then you have, yeah, different 22 different colors of stainer all come in these. There's three versions of black for instance, so there are lots of different variants on the same colour that you need just to make sure that you get the colours absolutely right when mixing paint. Are some colours more expensive than others? We charge the same for all of our products, it doesn't matter what the colour is. Some products, because they need more stainer in them, the darker colours will need more stainer. Um, technically they do cost us a little bit more to make. White colours you might only need, some colours you'll only need a couple of millilitres of stainer in them, some you'll need 50 millilitres of stainer in it just to get the colour you need. Uh, obviously there is a, a cost involved with that. In terms of our cost, the white is the most expensive because it's got the most in it, it's got the most titanium dioxide uh, and that's what will really increase the price. What will happen for the dark colours, we use what's called bases, and that means we'll reduce the level of titanium dioxide because we don't want the base to start as white as our white. And then when we put stainer into it, it will then achieve the colour you need a lot quicker and a lot easier. But as far as you're concerned, it's a level playing field, you, you charge the same, so you just take it on the chin. If somebody wants a load of white paint, yeah. if your heart sinks. If they, want a, <laughs> if they want a load of black paint, you're happy. The white paint, if they just want white, then that's brilliant because there's no additional uh, man hours involved because it doesn't need tinting and mixing and everything like that. So yes, it costs us a little bit more to make, but it doesn't then need to be remanufactured into the correct colour. Being a kind of a trade paint and you're, you're basically just making whatever colours people want so you don't have a load of fancy names like elephant's breath and all that. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we, we don't restrict our customers to any sort of colour cards and we don't use uh, yeah fancy names like that. Just literally whatever colour you need, we, we will match it and do it exactly as you want. It's not stirred, it's it's shaken, oh, not James stirred. Bond. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, the, uh, the machine goes in a number of different directions just to make sure it's all thoroughly shaken. It takes about two minutes yeah. uh, for it to get the perfect I've colour. I've seen it being done, but I just, uh, I, I never realised exactly what, you know, if you tried to do that yourself, you'd be shaking it for a long time, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, it'd take a long, long time to do it yourself. <laughs>